welcome back, and you would not want to miss this segment. The Carolina Honey Bee Company on Main Street in Traveler's Rest, South Carolina, is becoming nationally known. And two people are sitting here with me, Susan Gardner and Tim Dover. And Tim made a statement while we were in the break. He said, I don't think you can raise bees and not believe in God. That's right. And these, you have the most adorable store filled with wonderful little gift items and things, but you, and the honey is the best in the world. Thank I you. use it every day. And I, I'm just thrilled to have you here. Well, thank you. And so tell me now, you have classes, and more and more people are getting into this raising bees. That's right. As part of our business, we also sell beekeeping supplies, uh, everything from the bees themselves up to the jars to put your honey in, and we teach classes here in the county. Through Clemson University Extension, we, we teach the classes in Greenville County for beekeeping, beginner beekeeping up to the certified level. And uh, we have people coming from all over the area from as far away as Atlanta and Charleston and Charlotte to take our classes and of course locally here as well. And of course it takes a couple of days. Now if somebody doesn't know anything about this and they think they want to learn, what are the basic things you need? Well you want to start this out with the, the, with the this box. This pretty white box, mm -hmm. right? Uh, usually we paint our boxes white. It keeps it cool and the, and the bees like the white color. You could go with any soft uh, earth tone paint okay. would be fine. You could paint them brown or green or whatever, a woods color. And uh, the bees stay in here and when, when people buy bees, they, they buy them in a package or they catch a swarm. And the easiest way is to buy a package or a nu nucleus hive. And the package has around 3,000, I mean, three pounds. You this is it. This, this is, is it. Box. This is what the bees come in when you buy a package of bees, and there'll be approximately three pounds of bees in there. It was you know twelve to fourteen thousand bees, depending on how heavy they are, <laughs> in one queen. And you take this home with you, and, you, and people come and buy these, and they'll load their truck up, or they'll put it in the front seat of their car and strap it in and take it home, and then they'll take these bees and they'll place them inside a hive and let that hive grow and in time it'll start to make surplus honey for and us. And you have to have the queen bee. That's the queen what bee keeps is everybody, everybody together. See, it's That's always right. the gal that does it, right? Yep, <laughs> she comes in a small cage like this right here and there'll be a rock candy plug in one end of it where to keep her in place and, and the bees will, after you put that in the box, they'll chew that rock candy plug out and free her and it takes a couple of days normally for that to happen and she'll come out inside this little box and she'll start moving around her pheromones are in there and by that point this is their home and then they'll start building wax and and building and laying eggs and having brood raised and start making honey and that's an oversimplification of it but yeah that's basically right. the way it works now honey is something that i call it god's sweetener but it's good for you if people who have allergies sometimes can we, benefit from We have honey. a lot of people that come into the store that say that they're seeing reduced allergy symptoms when they eat a teaspoon of local honey every day. And it's because the bees collect pollen while they're collecting nectar and it ends up in the honey. And it's like almost giving yourself an allergy injection every time you eat a little bit of that honey. So well, it causes honey's wonderful spread on, drizzled around on a half a grapefruit. Oh, it's a, it's a dessert, you know. <laughs> but this is something unique that you people have done. And I'm, I'm amazed at what has happened since you started this business. It really has been blessed. God has taken our business from just an idea to something that's very um, thriving and growing. And we now are, are selling beekeeping supplies across the country. We have people coming from far away states to get packages of bees. We're selling honey all over the country um, and giftware as well. It's just really okay. taking on a life uh, of its own. Susan, I want to make something clear to people. We talked about the benefits and especially if you have an allergy. Mm -hmm. uh, just going to the supermarket and buying a jar of honey off of the shelf is not the same thing. And you have honey that is pure. Right, our honey's raw, unprocessed raw honey. 
honey. So it hasn't been heated to a high temperature and that grocery store honey has also been filtered to get any impurities out of it so that it won't crystallize. When they do that, they remove all that beneficial pollen See, that we were talking about. they're trying to prolong the life so it can stay on the shelf. Right. And that's right. not what you want. You want a raw local honey has the best health benefits. It has natural enzymes and that really beneficial pollen in it. How hard is it to raise bees? Well, it's a little bit of an effort, but it's not really hard. We have uh, people as young as 8 and 10 to 95 that are keeping bees. We have children come to our classes, and we have senior citizens come and take our classes, and it's a lot of fun. It's the only hobby that I've ever gotten into that can pay for itself. You know, once it starts producing honey, then that's value coming back on the investment. So it's, it's, it's just a lot of fun. It's something you can do with your children, you can do with your spouse. And it can be a whole family, whole families come in and get involved with it. We've seen that many, many times. And you have some lovely little gift items mm -hmm. that are a little bit unusual. And for instance, a bar of soap with Honey, honey and oatmeal in and it. And oatmeal. Yeah. It's probably very good for your skin. Honey is naturally moisturizing and actually has some antibacterial properties too. So it's a wonderful soap product. And on this little, I had to show this. Bloom where you're planted. This, <laughs> this would brighten up anybody's kitchen. And then you have, what is this? Hand soap made with honey. That also has our local wildflower honey in it. See, all these little things. And if you need to get a gift for somebody, I mean, I sort of did some Christmas shopping there. Instead of just the same old thing from the mall, you can give somebody something unique. Now, you want to show some, you have candles and Yeah, oh, I just some made goodies. some new candles. We have tall tapers, and um, we also have pillar candles. And beeswax burns beautifully. It has a very clear flame, and it uses up all the wax. So have you ever had a candle that's dripped all over your yes. tablecloth? Beeswax doesn't do that. It actually burns all the wax as the candle burns. So, and okay. it has a wonderful honey, warm honey smell when it burns also. And then you have some, what are those? Um, I have another, oh, these right oh. here? I've got some little kitchen towels that have embroidered bees on them and um, an oven. Hold them, hold them still holder. so we can get I'm a, not sure a which way you want to see. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> so, They're fun. They're happy things. Yep. And we have some other honey products too. We've taken honey and cooled it to make it crystallize in super fine crystals. This is called creamed honey. It doesn't actually have cream in it, but it's another wonderful way to enjoy honey. Um, it's more of a spread, and this one has cinnamon in it. It almost tastes like apple pie mm. when you're eating it. It's wonderful. Okay, so and then just the plain honey that you have in the jar. We have regular, plain, raw, unprocessed honey, and it's local. It's wonderful. I know it is. I <laughs> use it every day. But I think, and you have the hat. Oh, that's You oh know, if my. you decide to get started in beekeeping, having a little bit of protective gear is very important. The bees are very gentle, and they don't want to sting you, but you want to be able to protect your face, and especially your eyes from any bees. And um, we often have gloves on, too, although some beekeepers will work with their bees without wearing gloves. But having a helmet and veil like this is important. And then the next class starts about March the 8th, but then you'll have ongoing classes, so if people are interested, they can call we do this the year. number and find out. Out. That's right. Well, our next class is March the 8th, and it's a beginner class up to the certified level. We would encourage anybody that's interested to call us, come see us, sign up for the class. It's a lot of fun. Aren't you afraid of being bees. stung? No, no. <laughs> the, our bees are gentle and kind. They're not really aggressive. I mean, they, you can get stung. I'm not going to tell anybody you'll never get stung, but if you respect them and treat them the way you're supposed to, you can really minimize it. It's not scary. My children are around them all the time. You tell me that this white box, this hive, is home to hundreds of bees and that they are free to come and go at their... Well, that's the amazing thing about honeybees. When you set a hive up, you know, they'll travel three, sometimes up to five miles in every direction from their hive and then they'll come back every day. In the spring, the foraging bees will come make maybe three, four, five trips out for an hour, hour and a half at a time and come back with loads of nectar. And they'll go to different locations on different times of the day. Some plants produce nectar in the morning, say up till nine o'clock, but some don't produce nectar until late in the afternoon. So they'll go to different places throughout the day. And it takes, you know, probably a, a million trips, they say, to flowers to produce one pound of honey. That's a lot of flowers. 
a lot of flowers they've got to go to. So they'll, they'll make their route and they go, and they, they're like children. They only want to eat one thing at a time. So that's how we differentiate types of honey. When certain things bloom, that's all they will go like to. Like clover. Or, right. Like yeah. clover. Or in our area, the main uh, honey producing plant here is the poplar tree. And in the spring, usually the second, third week of April, for about three and a half to four weeks, the poplars bloom, a very large, beautiful mm -hmm. flower up on top of the trees. And the bees prefer that over everything else. And then later in the year, uh, up towards the mountains, the sourwood trees bloom. And when the sourwood trees are blooming, that's all they will go to. So we watch the bees and see where they're going, and that's how we can tell what type honey it is above and beyond the taste. And, and these color. tiny little creatures can find their way back to this white box, can. it's incredible. And, and we put more than one in a location, so we may have 30, 40 of these in one location all lined up, and, and they, they come, come back to back that particular to the same... box. Same box every time. Now there could be some drifting, sometimes just like with people, honeybees will go, well, I'll just go steal some from over here. And, but they always come back to their home. There's a unique pheromone and unique position for this hive, and they always come back to the one they're supposed to be at. It's amazing. It really is. They're just very, uh, it's just a blessing from God. If you study them, there's no way you could, I don't believe you could be an atheist and study a beehive. Now, do, do people, can, can people just come to your shop and, and see all these things? And they can. They can come. We're open Tuesday through Saturday and they can come in and, and they can see all the different products, they can get information on the classes, they can buy all the beekeeping supplies that they could ever want and need, they can buy the bees themselves, uh, and we mentor many, many people that come into our store and buy our products. Now I want to ask you, as environmentalists, you know, and people say, oh, well, they're just alarmist, you know, we've all, are, are some of these things that God gave us in this world, are they really endangered? and what's happening with bees. Absolutely, and everybody's known in the news about the bee collapse and colony collapse disorder, and that's really heightened the awareness in the general public. That's why so many people are getting into it now because they're trying to save the bees. Uh, there are pesticides in the environment, there are chemicals in the environment that when it hits a certain threshold will kill the honeybees, and without honeybees, we're going to lose many of the fruits and vegetables that we like that to eat. they pollinate. The without different... the honeybees, there will be there will be no pollination. In fact, in China, uh, there's one area where the honeybees can't live because of the, the pesticides that's been used in the past because they have such a long shelf life once they've been sprayed that they hand pollinate pear trees. So if that happens here, then a pear or an apple is gonna cost gonna, you $500. We're gonna be in trouble. We're gonna be in trouble and we can't do it with robots unless you wanna eat genetically modified food and I'm not really big on that either. I want things the way God made them. I don't want genetically modified anything if I can help it. So we, you know, we want to preserve our honeybees and people need to be aware of what they're using and the chemicals that they use and the things they spray around their house that they don't even realize not only hurting the honeybees, it's probably hurting us. I mean, there's a lot of more instances of cancer and diseases that we didn't have before. And I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, but to me it makes sense that it's somehow connected because they spray everything. They spray the golf courses. Mm -hmm. and, and then that water flows into a stream and flow, you know, and it's all pollution. Yep, so we, we want to try to keep, you know, as things as healthy and pure as we can. And we spend a lot of time talking to our neighbors and our neighbors' neighbors about what they use in their yards and the chemicals they spray and, and the things they do. And once they understand, most of these people stop doing those things which is good, so I think it's about education, it's about being good stewards of the animals we take care of, the creatures that God's blessed us with. You know, some beekeepers will say, well, I'm just gonna put it in a box and I'm not gonna touch it, I'm not gonna treat them, I'm not gonna feed them, because, you know, that's not natural beekeeping, but uh, natural beekeeping isn't in a nice, pretty little white box with movable frames, no. it's in a hollow tree in the woods. So if we're gonna keep them in boxes, we have to take care of them and feed them and, and, and you, nurture you, them. You actually have food in the box for the bees. If they run low on honey in, in the winter time, like right now, we're coming into spring and mm -hmm. some of our hives have ate, have eaten their food up, rather than let them starve, we'll give them a little bit of food to get them going. Until what do you the, put in there? Uh, sugar water. Mm -hmm. We have ways of giving them sugar water and they'll drink that down and put it in the hive and turn that into like a honey and mix it with pollen. 
and they'll eat that until the spring is fully, you know, things are blooming already. The red maples okay. are blooming here in Greenville County and that's the start of it. And as things start to bloom, we won't have to do that anymore, but you have to pay attention or they'll, like any other creature. Tim, do, do any of these classes, I mean, uh, could children yes, enter we have, into this? We've had seven, eight, nine year olds come and take the class and do as well as adults. It's not something that's so far above their head because, you know, uh, it's something that everybody can understand. It's something that you can, if you just stop and think about it, it's a living creature. It needs shelter, it needs food and space, and that's the biggest thing that they need. And uh, definitely children can do it, senior citizens. We have a, a gentleman taking our class that's approaching 90. March the 8th, he's going to come take the class. He's approaching 90 years old. He asked me, was he too old to become a beekeeper? And uh, I was, absolutely not. This man's probably as fit as I am. I hope I'm doing that well at 90. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, what, what you've done is, is an amazing thing. And I, I agree with you. You can't outthink God. And no human being could have, when you think about it, planned the perfection of these little creatures gathering the pollen and making things grow. And without them, we wouldn't have the things we have. That's right. So if you're interested or someone you, you're, maybe your children, you're welcome to call that number. And by all means, if you want a fun thing to do, go to Traveler's Rest to the Carolina Beekeeping Company. It's a store. They have all kinds of things there. And it's just fun to go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for Thank all you. that so you're nice doing to, see you. to make this a better world. It's nice Thank to you. See you. Thank and you. Wherever, wherever you are, try the honey. It is fabulous. See you next time.